Today we are going to learn how to identify the network switches, what is these abbreviations means and what are the part numbers of different Cisco switches. We will also look into the criteria of selection of the switches. Let's say tomorrow you will be designing what kind of information you will be needing. Different types of switches like modular, non-modular switches, managed switches, smart switches. We will look into that one. We will also look into the different standards of power over Ethernet. POE, POE plus, UPOE, UPOE plus, this is the latest standard. We will look into that one. And we will also look into what kind of different data stacking types are there, what is the power stacking is. And the last part, we will look into the licensing. Feel free to skip this section. I have already added the timestamps, so you can just quickly go to the section which you are interested in. Those who don't know me, my name is Vakas and I will be covering CCNA, NP and IE. Please hit like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified for the upcoming videos. Let's get started. The first thing we will look into is identification of switches. There are a lot of abbreviations in Cisco switches and every model which Cisco released, they have the abbreviations behind it, but they are not publicly releasing it. So these are more like assumptions from their data sheets that this part number represents a certain feature of the device. There is no hard and fast rules, but this is the one we have came as closest as possible. I will be maintaining a list on my website. I will try to make it as comprehensive as possible, but it will take some time. I will work on that one. So let's quickly do a few examples like how these part numbers work so you can identify what these abbreviations means. For example, if it is WS, it's workgroup, C for catalyst, N for nexus. In terms of licensing, if it is written LL, it's mean LAN light software. If it is L, it's mean LAN software. Let's do some examples. There are a lot of abbreviations. We will not be able to go through all of them. So let's quickly do some examples. So first example we have is for 2960X. This is one of the access layer switch. Let's quickly go through the part number, what these different abbreviations means. For example, the first part, WS, it's a standard part number. They are adding it to all the catalyst series. I am assuming it's WS means workgroup switch. If it is C, it's catalyst. Then comes the 2960X. This is the part number they are referring to, which have different series like 3850, 3750, uh, even 9300, 9500 series are there, which this part number represents that specific series then we have the next part is 48 that's the actual port numbers this is the port number which are available on the network switch like it comes in different variations for example 24 48 even some switches are there which comes as 92 ports this is going to be the port numbers on this switch the next one is f f means it's full poe all the ports support 15.4 watts the next abbreviation P means it's a PoE based. There are different variations in this one. You will see in different part numbers like U is referring to U PoE. And there is no specific part number they have used for U PoE plus. You can easily identify based on their power supply that how much power is going to be available for the PoE devices. D means this abbreviation is referring to the uplink. It's mean that what kind of uplink is used in this switch? D means it's a SFP plus. It could be Giga Ethernet. It could be copper based or it could be also dual based as well. So the next one is L. L means this is referring to the licensing. What kind of license or what kind of software is going to be running in this one? L means it's a LAN based. It's a layer two feature set. And there are other variations as well. LL which means LAN light and other types of switches. It depends on the network series. The next part number I have taken it is from 9300 switches, which is the one of the latest series, 9300 and 9500. C means, as we already seen, it's a catalyst series, 9300, it's a part number. 24, how many ports are there? U means, is it PoE, PoE plus or UPoE? This is a switch which is UPoE based. The last part is what kind of license is running on its essential or advantage. You will see these two part numbers. Essential means it's layer two series. And if it is advantage, it's going to come with layer three feature set. Like you can do the routing, you can do different things ex except NAT and all those things. So you will not be able to do that. But 
you can do the layer 3 functions like running the protocols and maintain the routing table. The next part we will be looking into is how you can select the switches from different network vendors. What is the different criteria of the selection? There are a few key informations you need to gather before selecting any device. For example, this device will be serving what kind of purpose? It's going to be access, distribution, core, data center, DMZ, where it's going to be placed. Number one. Second, what kind of feature set you will be needing? If it is on the access layer, you might be needing only layer two features, but depends where you will be placing it. So select the feature set. The third one is how many number of ports you will be needing? How many devices will be connecting on that device? Next part is what kind of uplinks you need? Is it SAP based? Is it gonna be copper based? Is it gonna be and what will be the speed of those uplinks? For example, 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig, what kind of uplinks you need? All right. The next part is, is it going to be connected with any PoE based devices? For example, CCTV, IP phones, access points. If it is going to get connected, what kind of power specifications it need? If it is an IP phone, most probably you will be okay with the PoE, but there are phones which consumes PoE plus. Then it comes the CCTV access points, which consumes UPoE power as well. And now the latest standard where building devices are getting connected, you will be needing UPoE plus, which is up to 90 watts. That will be also required. That is an important calculation. So you do it before selecting the switch. The last part is you will be needing stackable devices or you will need standalone devices. Once you have all this information, now it's very easy to select the switch. For example, once you have this whole information, you can easily select you need 2960, you need 9500, you need Nexus series, depending on where you will be placing it. We will have a separate lecture on the design. We will look into that one, how you can do that. Now let's look into the different types of switches Cisco is offering. For example, manage, unmanaged, modular switches, smart switches. What is the difference in these switches is the first one we will look into is what is the modular switches modular switches means it's a chassis base or one u base depending if the modules can be changed explain itself that it's going to be modular you will be able to insert the cards remove the cards change the supervised engine or upgrade the chassis with different interface types you can mix and match the interfaces like for example in Nexus or 6500 series switches you can put 40 gig cards even 100 gig cards at the same time it will be supporting different variations of the cards this is what modular means you can tweak it as per your requirement and these switches offers full-fledged functionality of Cisco iOS all of the functionalities will be running layer 2 layer 3 you can even have these IPS IDS on some switches. You can even run the third party services on these switches. These are what modular means. The next type of switch is unmanaged switches. These switches are meant to be placed on the edge where edge devices will be connected like laptop or any kind of network devices there. Some switches comes with PoE power as well. You cannot technically configure this one. It's just configured as a switch. It's gonna not going to do broadcast. That's the only benefit in unmanaged switches. And it's very cheap switches if you want to buy it for home or office. The next one is smart switches. Smart switches is a good alternative of fully managed switches. These are cheaper, but they offer good control over the traffic like layer two feature set. You can configure the VLANs, you can configure basic QoS and that kind of stuff. And these offers a GUI interface as well. You can easily tweak it, but it does not offer the full-fledged security features of layer 2 or layer 3, but these are good alternative to be used on the edge. The last type of switches which Cisco offers is fully managed switch. You can configure all the layer 2 feature set. It comes with different variations in terms of licensing like LAN light, IP base, IP services, even essential licenses there or advantage licenses there in new switches. And even it can be part of the DNA uh, center. We will look into that one, what these DNA centers are. We have a separate lecture for it. So these are the different types of switches which Cisco offers. You can 
easily identify with their part number what kind of things it can offer we will also look into the feature navigator in the next video that how you can find out a specific feature if you are looking for if we just go back like four or five years what was the ultimate devices getting connected to the networks which is was ip phones access point that's it but today the buildings are smart if you notice that a lot of devices are getting connected to the network you can manage them from for a very simple example is alexa you can manage all of the home appliances they are connected to the network devices and even in hotels in buildings smart buildings everything is connected in terms their smart devices ip tv ip phones access points cctv building management system everything is connected to the network devices they consume a lot of powers so you cannot power on all the devices from the same poe devices you need to have some other standards to cater this requirement that is where poe poe plus upoe and upoe plus comes so what is the difference between these different standards poe poe plus upoe upoe plus the major difference you need to remember is how much power it can offer for a device for example when it comes to poe it offers 15.4 watts for the device any device which is consuming less than this one it can be powered on then we have poe plus which offers 30 watts we have upoe and upoe plus which is cisco proprietary and it is not available for all the switches you need to be having specific series which supports this much power supplies and the UPOE supports up to 60 watts and UPOE plus which is the latest standard Cisco is offering it can power on up to 90 watts per port. One more important concept you need to remember that what kind of cable you will be needing when you will be giving different kind of PoE standards like PoE, PoE plus you can power it on with 5E category cables. When it comes to UPOE plus you will be needing category 6 cables. You might need to completely change the cables to power on the devices which are running UPoE plus. This is the major difference you need to remember. Keep this slide with you. It will help you to select different types of switches with different power supplies. Now let's look into what is stacking. Stacking have two types. One is data stacking and power stacking. We have different slides for it. The first part we will be looking is what is data stacking. When it comes to data stacking, it means that you will be making a group of switches which will be interconnected with the stacking cables and it will be allowing you to manage all the devices as one so your management plane comes as one your data plane can be used from one switch to another you don't need to have uplink to your centralized location from every switch let's say you have an uplink which is connected to switch one and you have other stack members like seven more stack members are there all of them are not required to have the uplink to the network they can be utilizing the uplink which is available on the first switch using the backplane of stack they can move the data between these switches what happens in this stacking is when all the devices are booting what will be happening is there will be an election who will be the active device who will be the standby and remaining all the devices will act as members of that stack anytime let's say the active device fails automatically the standby device will take over so where you will be using stacking is you will use where you need to convert multiple switches into one the second it will reduce the uplinks the third is it will be easier to manage these switches because all of them will be acting as one switch and it offers you high throughput as well as compared to standalone devices if you connect it using the copper cables between the switches it is 1 gig but when it comes to stack it can be even 480 gigs per second it's way higher throughput as compared to any uplink when it comes to 2960x series it has three different types of stack one is flex stack the next one is flex stack plus then flex stack extended there is a minor difference in all of these you need to just remember the high level difference between all the stacks it's not part of the exam but remember when you will be designing the network these are the important concepts when it comes to flex stack you can stack up to four switches and it can offer 10 gig throughput or 25 gig throughput depending on the stack cable used or the 
type of switches. FlexTech is no more available on most of the switches. It's an old standard. The next one, FlexTech Plus. This is the currently supported stack on the network devices. When it comes to FlexTech Plus, you can stack up to eight switches. So you will have a stack of eight different devices. All of this will act as one device. You can easily manage all of them with using one single IP address. It can offer you up to 80 gigs per second stack, which is way higher than flex stack or any uplink or up copper links you will be using. The last one is extended flex stack. What is the difference in this one? That's important one. It supports up to eight switches. That's difference is same, but it offers two variations. One is the hybrid stack and one is fiber stack. When it comes to fiber stack, you can keep these stacks, which is apart you will be extending these switches using the fiber cables so the distance between these devices can be larger in normal stack what happens is the cable comes as 50 centimeter or there are a few cables which comes as one meter as well that is the maximum distance you can create in one rack it's perfectly fine but if you will expand your network to multiple racks this is not a good choice you cannot extend your stack the only option is left is you will be using extended stack which works with fiber based cables you can just connect it on different racks and you will have your stack up and running the hybrid stack is this is a module only in the device which supports both of the stacks based on the fiber and based on their stacking cable you can connect any of it and it works perfectly that's the major differences between these stacks Every switch have their different terms for the stacking, but in 2960 XLs, this is the stack. The next one is Stackwise Plus. This was introduced in 3750 XLs, which is kind of obsolete, so you don't need to remember this, but it's a good term to discuss because in next series, they have utilized the Stackwise 480 and Stackwise Plus as well. So, what Stackwise Plus offers is you can stack up to 9 switches and up to 64 gigs per second of throughput behind the chassis. If you notice in the diagram, the connection wiring is different as compared to FlexStack. Whichever switches you will choose, always look into their installation guide. What is their recommended Stackwise configuration? Because it will be giving you the maximum throughput available from the device. What are the common features all the stacks offer is? Common management console, QS, you can manage it from centralized, unified CLI, you can have multicast throughput extended as compared to standalone devices. These are the major differences when it comes to the stack wise technologies. You, the major difference in these all technologies is the throughput, how much throughput it's offering, and what kind of series it is. It will change the variation of stack in that one. The next one they introduce is Stackwise Plus 480. This one was introduced in 3850. 3850 series is as compared to 3750 is offering way higher throughput. In this one, what they did is they stacked and provided up to eight switches can be part of stack and offers 480 gigs of bandwidth behind the stack. This is the major difference in all of this one. And the recovery time of these devices, they have reduced it to some milliseconds, which is excellent. For example, if the active switch fails, how much time it will take for this standby switch to come up. We will also discuss stackwise virtual VPC, VSS, when we will be making separate series for that one on specific to design, which will be helpful for pre-sales engineers as well as who are the new network engineers who don't understand what kind of different technologies are available in terms of stacking. Now let's look into what is stack power. When it comes to stack power in normal cases, when you have primary and secondary power supply in a switch, what kind of redundancy you are achieving is one into one. What is one column one means you have one as primary and one as secondary. If one fails, the other one will power on this switch. The next type of redundancy you can achieve is using RPS. RPS is an external power system which is gets connected to the switches and it offers you one colon N. What is one colon N means all of the devices will be utilizing this RPS in case their main power supply fails. Now we will be looking into what power stack does. When it comes to power stack, 
all of these switches with the power supply are clubbed into one they will be offering you a big pool of power supply you can even connect a switch which does not have a power supply in that one it will still power on that is the beauty of power stack when it is power stack you can stack up to four switches together and you can add one supply in one other switch can have two power supplies and some switches may have no power supply they will all be powered on from the common pool of power supplies in case of failure they will be taking the power from the other devices that is what happens in power stack for example you have four different power supplies all of those power supplies will be clubbed together and they will be available for all the switches as a common power stack all of the switches will consume from this common pool the last part of the lecture is the licensing this is a quick overview of the licenses there are a lot of licenses i will be making a series for each switch what kind of licenses it supports what these licenses means and if you want to find out the particular feature how you can do that but these are the few most utilized feature sets like lan base ip base ip services base lan base will be reflected using l IP base will be reflected using S and IP services will be reflected using E. Don't confuse yourself, E is also refers to essential, which is actually which is almost equals to LAN base. Don't confuse yourself. Just look into the description what kind of feature set it offers. For example, in LAN base, it's purely a layer 2 feature set. You will not have layer 3 capabilities, you cannot do the routing on that one. You cannot utilize it for inter VLAN routing as well because you will not have much control over the layer 3 traffic. And you can run major protocols of layer 3 like OSPF and EIGRP. The next one we have is IP base. IP base inherits all the layer 2 features from LAN base, but it also offers you layer 3 feature set. For example, now you can run OSPF, Ring version 2. EIGRP and different multicast protocols and it offers you inter VLAN routing. The next one is IP services. This is a full fledged feature set of IP base and LAN base. The IP services license offers you advanced layer 3 functionalities like, for example, VRF Lite, OSPF features, ISIS protocol, which is more utilized in service provider network. But these are the major differences available in different series. You can easily identify it with the last part number, what it is, and you will be and you should be fine. If I have increased your knowledge in any ways, please hit like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified for the upcoming videos.